Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Muhammad Magzan bin Musa. <coughs> I'm from the psychology. <coughs> excuse me. I'm from the psychology and counselling program at the School of Applied Psychology, Policy and Social Work, University Utara, Malaysia. Uh, my presentation uh, will be based on uh, on a study that I did uh, from the art therapy perspective whereby I'm trying to uh, trying to explore the intra and interpersonal conflicts among teen pregnancy in Malaysia right so uh, in Malaysia right now uh, the population is more than I know, 30 over million and uh, teenagers represent about 20% of the total population and uh, one of the issue uh, that really you know uh, most people are really concerned, especially in the uh, social networking. Uh, we are really worried about the pregnancy issue among teenagers in Malaysia. All right, and uh, based on these statistics, uh, based on these particular slides, you could see this is a statistic remaja hamil. Remaja meaning uh, adolescent hamil. Uh, uh, hamil uh, refers to uh, pregnancy. So this is statistics of uh, upper uh, teenage adolescent pregnancy in Malaysia uh, within uh, the year 2014 to 2018 okay and uh, you could see that there's a you know the number has decreased decreased quite a lot uh, due to some of the intervention that being done by the you know by 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 the, by the, by, the, by the Malaysian government uh, including some NGO okay so thank on that help and uh, according to the world health organization uh, teen age pregnancy is de defined as a pregnancy in which the mother age is between 13 and 19 yeah and uh, the age of consent is the minimum age at which an individual is considered legally uh, able to give consent to sexual activity and uh, the age of consent in malaysia is 16 and uh, individual uh, who are aged uh, 15 years old or younger in Malaysia are considered to uh, considered not legally able to give consent to sexual activity and such activity might result in prosecution for statute rape or the equivalent local law and uh, social acceptance of uh, teen pregnancy is still poor restricted and excluded uh, it is also regarded as a taboo as a premarital sex incest rape sexual abuse and teen marriage became a uh, uh, became became as a pre precursor okay and uh, the idea of using condom and oral contraceptive uh, was still a taboo within the conservative society as it was often seen as promoting free sex and encouraging promiscu promiscuity okay uh, the okay uh, Research has shown that an average of 18,000 teenage girls in Malaysia get pregnant each year. Out of this number, 25% of about 4,500 cases involve pregnancy out of the wedlock. wedlock. Okay, and uh, teen pregnancy out of the uh, out of wedlock uh, is one of the social issue in Malaysia. It's considered as a social ill, and uh, the increased number has attracted the attention of the Malaysian government to deal with the issue. Uh, in as much as pregnancy could jeopardize teenage life uh, like dropping out from school violent and delinquent de delinquency uh, this research is being done uh, in Malaysia and uh, and based on the research that, uh, from, from the statistics uh, it seems that uh, the teen pregnancy constitute, constitute about 12% uh, of the total infer uh, fertility rate and among one third are due to pregnancies of unwed mothers and a study has shown that uh, pregnancy uh, out of wedlock is the main factor for infanticide and the, ab and the ab abandonment of babies more often than not unwed mothers are not accepted by their own parents hence uh, it leads to the practice of dumping or abandoning a uh, newborn infant yeah? and uh, based on these slides uh, the following slides will contain graphic photos from newspaper cutting on inf infanticide and abandonment cases in Malaysia it's quite graphic and 
but then it will give us some 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 understanding uh, and uh, and a good perspective why I why I really uh, go into this particular topic on teen pregnancy. So these are some visual whereby uh, newly born uh, infant were killed, um, which we suspected is been done by the by the by the mother and also the partner of this uh, particular baby, uh, who is considered which we, where we can consider them as uh, you know the father, the biological <laughs> the biological father and mother of this particular uh, infant. And there's another one. It's quite graphic and it's really disturbing uh, seeing all this newspaper clipping, uh, the way an uh, infant died and be killed you know, in, in a very tragic manner. And uh, you can look at this, all this uh, visual, which is so powerful in many ways. And uh, this is one, uh, one, of the video, one of the newspaper clipping whereby they found a, a baby uh, in a... In a in a, in a pile of uh, uh, rubbish in a rubbish and uh, and also uh, the baby is being uh, being dismantled by the you know by uh, wild dogs and uh, here another one uh, baby being dumped in a, in a, uh, in the in a in a back shape and uh, a baby another one here a baby is being uh, someone found it in a, in the bush you know, uh, at the backyard of one house in Malaysia, and there are so uh, this adding. Okay, uh, <coughs> uh, before I go into the uh, the psychological issue of uh, the psychological issue of uh, teen pregnancy, uh, basically I would like to uh, would like to discuss uh, first the traditional family concept in Malaysia. In the Malay Muslim culture in Malaysia, being pregnant out of lock, or out of wedlock is associated with misbehavior, being a pervert, and significantly bring shame and dishonor to the family, or seen as an unfortunate event. Instead of resolving the issue, families should be more focused on how to handle the embarrassment caused by their daughters. And, and, in, in, and in many cases, the girl is sent to a halfway house to deliver the child. Some parents want their daughter to come, come home alone without the baby, as they believe an illegitimate child would bring shame to the family. And uh, due to the shame of being pre pregnant out of wedlock, the girl is either encouraged to marry the father of the baby, usually her boyfriend, or undergo an ab abortion, or give up the baby for adoption or send it to a shelter home in order to hide the pregnancy. So these are the things. And uh, in Malaysia, we have, we have several shelter home uh, services for under unwed mothers, uh, which has been established uh, more than uh, 50 years ago in Malaysia. And uh, this, uh, uh, there are three types of shelter home administration, uh, which is governmental, semi-governmental, and also non-governmental non organization or the NGO. And uh, the, the shelter homes are all under the Malaysian Care Center Act 2006. And uh, as the unwed mothers are considered as being exposed to sexual abuse or in urgent need of protection, uh, according to the Malaysian Child Act 2000, uh, the shelter homes are accordingly serve as a re residential correctional facility to prevent reci recidivism of pregnancy out of wedlock by giving protection, supervision, rehabilitation, and also training. And uh, the minimum period for residing in the shelter home is about two weeks, and the uh, maximum duration is almost two years, depending on the girl's need. Uh, in general, the shelter home uh, offer various activities from vocational classes uh, like uh, tailoring classes and handicraft, outdoor and religious activity, job placement as a, vol as a voluntary work. And uh, 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 the next thing that I'm going to share is about the research uh, in Malaysia regarding to the unwed teen teenage mothers. Uh, there are a few empirical studies that uh, uh, exist on uh, Malaysian unwed teen mothers in shelter home. Uh, one study focused on the social interaction between the staff and the girl, one of the romantic relationship, and others are on the effective, effectiveness of the program offered in the shelter home. And uh, although studies uh, about residential care has been conducted for many years in Malaysia, the, spec the perspective about the intra and the intra conflict experienced by the unwed mothers who reside in residential care receive less attention. And uh, art therapy approach uh, is one of the uh, 
uh, one of the method that can be used to explore uh, the teenage uh, teenagers issues uh, related to teen pregnancy and uh, uh, and art therapy is a comfortable uh, approach for teenagers to communicate on the internal and the external issues of themselves. Yeah, so I think uh, this is uh, art therapy is one of my passion. I mean, I really enjoy doing art therapy in many ways, especially helping uh, the you know the teenage uh, the, the, among the teenage uh, what is teenage uh, issues uh, related to uh, related to. Uh, pre-sex, premarital sex and also uh, having a baby out of wedlock and uh, at the same time uh, it is nice, it's really uh, quite rewarding to a certain extent uh, doing art therapy is because you're using art and then that involves all kind of medium and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, whoever using the art therapy approach uh, can be as creative as they they can be as creative as they want. So this is the best part of doing art therapy uh, when trying to explore the intra and inter, internal the intra and intra uh, in and and inter uh, personal conflict among uh, teen pregnancy in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, the usage of art therapy approach is a channel for the, the teenage to express uh, state and shower their experiences and their feeling which they are unable to express orally. This issue is also very crucial for the teenagers because art allowed them to express their cognitive development and emotional uh, level. And uh, art therapy is a beautiful method. Uh, to, ex to to oneself through symbols and metaphor. Yes, in art therapy, yeah, symbols and metaphor are really uh, one of the one of the uh, one of the component which is really uh, which is really uh, it can tell you a story, uh, you know, based on symbol and met metaphor, uh, which is being produced, you know, uh, during the art therapy session. And uh, art therapy is also a way to extract negative feeling out from the soul uh, without hurting anyone. And uh, our aim, the aim of this particular study, you know, the reason why I did this study is that, uh, is to listen to understand how to how it's feel to experiences unwanted, unwanted, unplanned pregnancy, giving birth to a new newly born baby, and giving away the baby to be adopted by unknown couple among unwed teen mothers, uh, living in shelter home. The application of art therapy in order, uh, the application of art therapy in order to shed light. Uh, on the psychological aspect of teen pregnancy uh, and the purpose of this study basically is to understand the intra and interpersonal conflict experienced by unwed teenagers reside at the residential home by using art therapy approach and uh, based on the concept of telling without talking uh, a picture tell a thousand word uh, uh, this is where how art therapy is being used uh, as, a, as a modality to explore the internal conflict that they are experiencing and uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, interesting part of art therapy is the symbolism in art therapy which has been uh, which has been introduced by Jung you know one of the greatest uh, one of the great uh, psychologists uh, in uh, in the in the discipline of psychology and also symbolism is something that uh, can be used to express the inner self. You know, it's, it's really difficult being being Malay Muslim and then you have a you know being pregnant out of the wedlock. It's really a, quite embarrassing and very difficult for all these uh, teenage yeah, uh, pregnancies uh, to express their inner self. It's really it's really difficult and because of the shameful, because of uh, you know the shame and also the stigmatization being given to uh, teen preg um, among teen pregnant. Uh, 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 Malay, Malay Muslim uh, teenagers. So uh, symbolism is one of the approach whereby you can read, uh, you know, you can really uh, read and also at the at the same time you can you can understand what those what are the, the symbol what are all the symbols that are being shown in the in in uh, in in the artwork uh, which is being produced by the uh, teenagers. Okay, uh, uh, the methodology, the research methodology, mine, uh, the art therapy, my art therapy uh, paper, uh, it's basically uh, I'm doing a qualitative research uh, design uh, with a thematic drawing to understand unwanted, unplanned pregnancy among teenagers. So, 
uh, the methodology is a qualitative research design using art therapy and uh, the sample of the study uh, involves six unwed mothers who reside in non-governmental shelter home for teenage mothers in northern part of Malaysia and their age is between 15 to 19 years old and uh, study participants were given an informed consent uh, informed consent form to obtain the voluntary consent and uh, the procedure is that the, uh, this study has uh, was conducted with 11 uh, art therapy session uh, this therapy session this 11 therapy session were divided in three phases uh, phase one is the warming up and the phase two uh, to draw emotion, phase 3, uh, art therapy theme exploration and uh, uh, phase 4, termination session. Alright, these are the four phases that, uh, that I applied in my study. And the theme, uh, I need to give a theme. Normally, I think it's, it's really uh, kind of interesting to know that uh, when in art therapy, if you gave a theme uh, for what, what does your sample of study would like to deliver uh, it is nice to be to be to, to to deliver it when it is in uh, in a directive approach whereby myself as a as a researcher you know giving them uh, instruction what are they are supposed to do a guided one a guided instruction so it is nice it's kind of interesting uh, using all these uh, uh, various team whereby all these various teams look like uh, you know something uh, which is really really related to their uh, personal experience as a, as a, as you know as being being pregnant out of the wedlock yeah which is a taboo and uh, it, and it's considered as a sin uh, in 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 islam okay uh, the th among the things that i use for this particular research is that this is what really happened to me my secret unforgettable memories this is my life only i know story from the heart uh, an in-depth interview with one of the thin drawings uh, selected by the sample. Uh, the data collection uh, were collected from drawing and in-depth interview by analyzing the content of the drawing imagery, uh, which consists of four categories of symbols. Uh, symbols were categorized into personal symbol, universal symbol, cultural symbol, and art word. And, uh, it, uh, and the, the in-depth interview using the drawing produced by samples of the study and in-depth interview were conducted. All interviews were conducted by the first author, in, uh, by myself, uh, in Malaysian language. Uh, all the interviews were audio recorded and transcribed. And the analysis, yes, the analysis of the symbol. Yeah, basically, we have all this drawing and in, in the drawing, there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, imagery. And uh, the imagery uh, turned out to be uh, in a symbolic form. Most of the imagery being that is being uh, been shared by these teenage mothers uh, through uh, uh, with all kind of symbol. Okay, like what I mentioned earlier earlier on, uh, like what I mentioned earlier on, eh, the universal symbol, personal symbol, cultural symbol, and also artwork. And uh, the analysis was based on Brown and Clark. 2006 recommendation and started by re and, and started by reading the transcription several times to become familiar with the data. Uh, the researchers uh, the research had several discussion uh, on the codes and the content of the interview during the, the process of gathering sub team and team. The sub themes and the themes were reviewed and defined in order to confirm that it should reflect the explicit and the implicit ideas expressed by the sample this study and uh, in this study I really uh, emphasize on the ethical consideration uh, which uh, the ethical uh, standard were fulfilled by the form of ethical approval of the social welfare department of Malaysia as well as uh, from each shelter home involved uh, prior to the interview, the respondents were informed about the, the purpose of the study, their role and right, confidentiality, the data collection method and their voluntary participation. Uh, the respondents were also informed that they could withdraw from the study at any time. And uh, now the result, uh, the result of the study uh, based on the drawing and the interview which, be, uh, which have been conducted uh, to uh, six Malay female unwed mothers uh, and uh, uh, all these six uh, female unwed mothers they had uh, secondary level education 
and uh, most of them has uh, has been terminated uh, their schooling uh, when they became pregnant and uh, four four main teams were identified under the intra and the inter conflict interpersonal conflict experienced by the participant first psychological conflict second is a spiritual conflict third is the physical conflict and four conflict and 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 the fourth is a social conflict uh, nine sub team were identified that represent intra and interpersonal conflict experienced by the participant uh, okay i'll go one by one uh, briefly uh, first i'll go into the psychological uh, conflict number one is about grief and loss yeah uh, feeling grief and loss of family trust and loved and also losing own child for adoption whereby uh, you know uh, all uh, the most most of these uh, unwed mothers the baby that being born uh, were given for adoption because it's really a, it's, it's really a big issue in the malay muslim culture in malaysia uh, you know to have a, to have an illegitimate uh, child in the family yeah and also longing longing missing the newly newly born babies missing previous happiness happy lives uh, missing family uh, see, these are the longing you know, the longing which is uh, very psychological and uh, it's it's really in, in, in it really captured it captured the essence of uh, loved yeah loved and attention uh, to oneself or to the babies and the previous life that they have uh, experiences and also another psychological conflict that I discovered from this study is frustration and hatred yes uh, frustration most of these unwed mothers they were very frustrated and hate uh, towards the irresponsible boyfriend and also the new newly born babies yes uh, some of these girls they are not some of them are really happy to have a newborn baby but there are also cases whereby newborn babies are being uh, are not being taken care by the biological mother the teen teen the teen pregnancy yeah? because the, the hated because of because of the particular because of the baby the unwanted baby uh, the unwanted child uh, uh, which which uh, bring disgrace to 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 the teen to, to the teen mothers and uh, and and I could observe uh, some of these teen uh, teen uh, teen pregnancy mothers uh, were very reluctant or very unhappy. Uh, to have a to have a new long, newborn baby uh, with them so these are the the psychological issue or the psychological conflict conflict and the sec second one is a spiritual conflict whereby it's a sin dilemma it's, yes it's a big it's, it's 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 a big sin to be to to have a child out of wedlock you know and and it reflect you know the feeling of shame of being sinful muslim woman oh, so these are the one of the greatest dilemma uh, which is being faced by uh, the teen pregnancy uh, the teen pregnancy mothers okay and the second one is self and good god relationship okay this is another one uh, uh, some some of them uh, they, they want to repent and seek forgiveness uh, but it's it's that is one of one ways of uh, trying to overcome uh, the spiritual conflict that is being experienced yes being sinful yeah doing uh, being pregnant out of the wedlock so it's a great it's a it's a, dis, it's a disgrace to the family and to this uh, to to uh, to the new to the new uh, uh, to the new uh, uh, teenage mothers all right okay that is the spiritual conflict and the third one is the physical uh, conflict whereby uh, during the pregnancy period uh, the body image has changed yeah and most of these teenage uh, girls they are they have negative self image about being a pregnant teenager and uh, the body image does do uh, the body image during pregnancy uh, contribute to uh, uh, to a negative feeling of being unwed mothers yeah it, it, it created that 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 un uh, negative uh, feeling uh, whereby uh, they are not really happy uh, being an unwed mothers and also uh, there will be some physical changes uh, uh, they have, uh, and most of these girls uh, they have difficulty to adapt with the with the uh, pregnancy uh, physical challenges you know say they are not ready you know being at age of 18 19 years old uh, is not the age of being pregnant but then this is what happened and uh, uh, and it contribute to uh, physical uh, issues whereby the their their uh, the body is no longer looks like a teenager but then it looks like uh, you know a woman who are uh, pregnant so these are the uh, the physical conflict which is being faced by the teen mothers okay and other, the, the fourth uh, social conflict would be the social stigma stereotype prejudice and discrimination 
okay faced by the teenage mothers and uh, they are and, uh, it contributes to the feeling of worry about social judgment and evaluation yes they are being judged yeah being sinful being uh, uh, you know uh, uh, a wild teenagers which is beyond control so these are the thing that uh, the, the social conflict which is being faced by this uh, uh, by the uh, teenage mothers yeah the social stigma the stereotyping that they are really a bad bad girls they are not, not really a good uh, you know, a good, beautiful person, and also, uh, the, you know, the prejudice and the discrimination uh, being uh, being pregnant uh, at the early age without having a, uh, you know, without having a partner uh, that really wanted to have the baby to rear the baby. Okay, and another social conflict is that the status changes uh, from single to uh, unmarried mothers. So that this status. Uh, uh, the, the status changes. Uh, it's really uh, something. Uh, it's, it is something that is unwanted by this particular group of people. Yeah, being single and you are unmarried. So that is a big dis disgrace. Uh, you know, it, it brings disgrace to the family. And also at the same time, they will be, they were called. They are, they are afraid of being called names like you know like a like bitch prostitute yeah uh, which all these labels social label which is really really uh, really uh, it's a big stigma you know in 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 the Muslim Malay culture in in Malaysia all right okay uh, these are the visual uh, from uh, from the art therapy session that that I managed to collect you know with the with their consent uh, whereby if you could if you could if you could look at the uh, the drawing, the first drawing here, it shows that you know the, uh, the state of the mind, uh, the intra and the intra and the inter uh, interpersonal conflict that these unwed mothers are facing. Yeah, uh, based on this drawing, where there are a lot of symbol, and from this symbol we could really uh, we can you know uh, to a certain extent you can read uh, what are they experiencing uh, being uh, being pregnant without. You know, without the without the husband or yeah, without the husband. Okay, it's so a lot of uh, you know I've shown here quite quite a number of uh, symbol. All this painting and all this drawing. Sorry, you could see how expressive these people are, and they're trying to, to to really express their inner self through drawing. So I find it is quite effective. Uh, you know, uh, to approach uh, is how to approach and also to to understand uh, what are they going through you know from this uh, from all the drawings that i've collected during the art therapy session and uh, you could look at this yeah, and uh, the lot of symbols you know, it's, it's like a storytelling kind of thing you know uh, it's like reading all these symbol and then try to give some meaning and then you can have, you can have a better understanding what are they going through all right uh, these are and some of the images are quite graphic and and disturbing to a certain extent yeah and when i did this when I when I collected all this drawing, I don't expect the drawing to be uh, in, in this form. You know, it's so expressive in many ways, and it's you know it's telling you a story, just like what I, I mentioned, eh? telling without talking, uh, apa, uh, telling without talking, and uh, apa, when words are not enough, you could see the inter the intra and the internal conflict. All right, so these are the things that uh, based on all this drawing, uh, I made my own conclusion. Uh, that all this uh, uh, drawing with all kind of you know, disturbing symbol, uh, it reflects the inner self and the outer self of these teenage mothers, the group that I, uh, you know, uh, approach uh, for a couple of years in my uh, in my voluntary work uh, in the up north at the up north region of Asia. All right, so these are the symbols whereby you can look through, and I think it's quite universal whereby you can see you know all sort of symbol like you know. Uh, universal symbol. Some are very personal. Some are very uh, culture cultural symbol, which might not be understood by you know people who are not in the Malay in the, in the Malay Muslim uh, who are not from the Malay Muslim culture. So uh, this is another one. Bunuh diri. Bunuh diri meaning uh, kill, kill. I'm going to kill myself. Yeah. So these are the images which is quite disturbed to a certain extent, and but then it gives a lot of meaning and uh, understanding. Uh, related to the issue of teen pregnancy among uh, Muslim Malay uh, teenagers. Alright, so uh, so basically this other thing that you know uh, the drawing that I, I referred to uh, as my data and the 
and the uh, the, the, the in-depth interview which being which is being conducted by uh, by myself uh, to all this uh, which is being conducted individually by myself to all the six samples that I've uh, that that is uh, who are involved in this particular study. All right, so I guess uh, I leave uh, for your uh, observation and also trying to understand all this. Uh, upper, uh, what do you call this? The drawing. What does the drawing? Uh, you know, it gives you some meaning. You know, some idea, some rough idea. What are they going through? And uh, based on the finding, the research show that the technique used in art therapy often ways that are harmless to an individual to express their feeling verbally and non-verbally. Art therapy allowed adolescents, uh, allowed adolescent in this study, to not only reflect on and share their life stories from the drawing. Okay, so this is kind of interesting, and the technique also allowed the participant to express themselves in many ways using visual, using art and visual medium, especially in the sub, especially if the subject are unable to express their feeling verbally because of the disturbance faced by them. Yes, so it's much more, much more relaxed to express yourself uh, visually compared, you know, uh, verbal uh, kind of exchange uh, with the uh, with me especially being 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 the researcher of this particular study and uh, the participant this research also did sharing that the use of art therapy allowed them to share and express spontaneously on the actual feeling what really what really going through their mind and what is re what is really being experienced you know uh, their 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 feelings in in, in uh, being 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 pregnant without you know without a husband and later on you know uh, having a baby uh, out of the wedlock in conclusion, uh, from this study, I would like to conclude is that art therapy is a technique that can be used and featured to help individuals or group in crisis, conflict or psychological disorder to obtain internal healing. So, uh, and uh, the implication of this study uh, is that uh, it involved uh, involve the knowledge field in, in the implication involved the knowledge field in art therapy, uh, the implication on the research methodology and implication on the community. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for my presentation. Uh, so thank you so much for your attention, and uh, we'll we'll talk again later. Thank you.